Hello everyone, welcome back to Next.js playlist. Hope you're enjoying the series. Today we are not going to talk about any projects or any hands-on. Rather, we want to focus on one important aspect from Next.js, which is about thinking in Next.js. But why? Why do you need it? So with my experience in working with Next.js and reviewing a bunch of code over the time, what I realized is there are three kind of developers who need this lesson, who need this video and who needs to go through this video end to end. Number one, if you are a React developer wants to get started with Next.js and somewhere in back of your mind, you believe that you know React in and out and you are going to find Next.js really like a cream, super easy and you are going to really master on it in probably a couple of days. That is a myth. And why it is a myth, I'm going to talk about this. Second, you are a React developer who got started with Next.js, but you are finding it little difficult to get things going. You are getting review comments, which you really not anticipating and taking care of those review comments and factoring and refactoring in your code is taking a while for you. And the last, you are really finding it overwhelming because you are hearing a lot of Next.js terms and jargon and you're building an opinion that Next.js is really hard, especially with the app route of things are really, really messy and we are not able to proceed with it. So if you are in any of this category, this video is for you. So I hope you enjoy going through it and you learn something from it. If you like this video, please give a like and share and please subscribe to the Postscript because once you do that, I really feel motivated to teach you much, much better way. All right, we are going to learn this with a story. Let's start with a story. One disclaimer though, everything that you are going to hear or see in this video, the opinions are mine. If you agree, it is great. If you disagree, it's fine too. The story is about a React developer who just submitted a code to a code reviewer and the code reviewer is reviewing the code and the code is written in Next.js. Now, in many cases, it might happen the code is really great and it is following everything from Next.js that is supposed to follow. And Next.js as a framework provides a lot of stuff and the developers are really, really taking care of it. I hope that's the case and that's how we should be doing stuff. But let's hypothetically think about a situation as part of our story that this React developer have submitted a code and once code reviewer seeing this code, opening this code, guess what he or she is just seeing in the code. Wow, for 10 files, in 8 files, we see use client. And in all those files, we have use state, use effect, use reducer like hooks. But hang on, hang on, what's the problem? Isn't Next.js based on React? Next.js is a React.js framework, right? So we are really, really free to use all the things from React. And in React, we are so liberal in using use state, use reducer, use effect, at least until now. We don't know in the future version what's going to happen things are going to change. But till now, we are using them quite, quite freely. Then what's the problem with Next.js? Why can't I use it? What's the problem? One of the prominent problem is in understanding what our client wants. Maybe our client is very nitty picky about SEO, search engine optimization. If you are using this client side hooks and doing things on the client side, are you going to achieve good SEO? What do you think? So if you go to a React.js application and if the application is running, it's loaded perfectly fine, right click on your browser and go ahead and see in view source what do you see well you will probably see a things like this if you just structure it well and focus in the oval area that is there on your screen you will see a div root and then it is having an id and your entire application as a single page application actually come and sit inside that and all this data fetching all this html creation all this script interactivity everything takes place in the client side so if that is the case how are you going to achieve seo we're going to talk about it in a bit but first understand how react works and the client-side rendering model. So that's your CSR, client-side rendering, the React way. What happens? You make a call to server and server starts sending you as a response. And you have that particular component which is going to show you the end output. Each of these markers that you see over here is kind of your loading state. Like, so server is sending you the response, your UI is loading. Okay, fine, so first response has come. Then browser starts downloading the script. Again, you are loading further. 
so you have the script with you you have the html structure with you now react is going to sprinkle his magic on top of it going to do all this hydration and everything and finally you have a fully interactive ui it's a very high level view of how client side rendering is taking place in a react application we have been developing this for years of course there is nothing wrong with that the initial load might be a bit slow but once the application is loaded it's like a single page application it will be very very fast on top of that we can use many other libraries to achieve things like routing deep linking and all these aspects no problem with that now that's csr now organization find that initial load really matters to me I really cannot afford my users and the clients to wait for it. You can always go for server side rendering. So with that, you get the initial structure quite faster. Though you don't have this JavaScript, all these things downloaded, but your initial page is loading as a server side render page. It is getting loaded quite faster. Your customer is not really facing the delay that they were facing before with the CSR. And then with the initial page coming up, you are also downloading the scripts and again react is putting its magic and you have again a fully interactive ui so if you compare it with the previous version where you had too many waiting and then you got a fully interactive ui with csr with ssr you are getting the ui much faster so this is where you are probably doing some improvement but still after this page become fully interactive if you now have to go for data fetching, you still have to make a network call. And with network call, you don't have any guarantee like when the response is coming back. You might incur the problems that we have, like the network waterfall issue. One request is really waiting for the previous request response and things like that. You might have certain issue with your web vitals. So those things were into the consideration when Next.js came into picture. Next.js as a framework have already given us things like pre-rendering, the static site generation and everything. But with App Router, we got something really special. We got introduced to a term called React Server Components. One thing though, React Server Components is part of React, is not part of Next.js. That's something that we need to understand. It is not Next.js thing, it's React thing. And in future, as a React developer alone, not as a Next.js developer or not as any other frameworks developer, as React developer alone, we are going to feel and we are going to realize the concept of React server components much, much strongly. But today what is happening? Today in the React ecosystem, the developer ecosystem, people have not explored React server components much. It is only when they're stepping into Next.js, they're hearing about React server components, even including Next.js documentation talk about it. That's when they start learning. And if they're skipping that part of React server components and the understanding of it, they are the one writing the code that the code reviewer was seeing in the beginning with full of use clients. So that's why I want to connect the dots. The first thing in thinking in Next.js is about understanding what React Server Component is all about. It's about co-locating your React components to with your data store so that from the client side, the amount of call, the network call that you make to fetch the data and make our client side components fully aware of the data with all the problems that we have with the network waterfall, the bad UX and all these things we can completely avoid. So why when you're getting started with Next.js, one thing to realize is that by default all the components in Next.js are server side components so it means you have to bring in certain architectural thought process in your mind when you are coding with Next.js that I have to really maintain this paradigm of server components as much as possible and there will be some occasions where I have to bring in client components what are those occasions by the way the occasions are when you need user interactivity for example just Imagine a page that the page is with a lot of data and at the bottom of it, you have a button or a checkbox where you want your user to interact, maybe click on it or check that checkbox and certain event to happen. Now a server components cannot handle events because server components are the server and there is really no event. Events are on the client side, it's on the browser. So it means for any interactivity and the events to handle, it has to happen on the client side component. That's where you have to really put this mind map that server components is where you will be fetching the data, you will be making your components data aware because your server components are co-located to your data store, they are near to the data store. So it means those expensive network call, everything you reduce. Now, once your component is with data and you want some interactivity, this is the time for the interactivity part alone, you have to bring the client component. So that is where you will be using this use client directory. That is where you might be using certain React hooks. That's perfectly fine. But don't use use effect in a component to fetch the data 
and forcefully make the server component as a client component you are then abusing Next.js. you are really really not using Next.js as a framework so that's the lesson number one that i want to give you guys in terms of thinking in Next.js, treat server components really well because it's a powerful concept and understand the entire paradigm of how client component can be used within server component how can you pass a server component as a props to a client component and how they interact with each other this design concept is pretty pretty important as a developer who is just starting with nextjs from reactjs or getting into the soup of not understanding what exactly happening around me all right then how about thinking in react so many years we have spent in thinking in react now i am talking about thinking in nextjs so one thing understand thinking in react is never going away thinking in react in terms of breaking the monolith doing the component architecture building the single unit of component that's supposed to do one work very well everything remains same even with client component usage of all these hooks maintaining the state in the client side component managing the event in the react way everything remains same along with that the extra thing that what you are going to learn or you're going to focus is the concept of server components by the way if you're looking for an in-depth understanding of server components i already have a video for it you can go and check out that i hope that it solves you know a lot of problem for you let's talk about another problem that i see in code and while doing the code review let's say the left side one is a home page and it has a header and left side there is a sidebar and of course there are certain are in orange and then you click on something or you do something you go to the next page in the next page there is no header there is only sidebar and then the components are also aligned differently now to remove that header part we tend to use things like use router from use router we was want to get the instance of router and after that we see like what is the path that i am in am i in the home path or i'm in the shopping cart path and based on that i'm just going to remove that header from there now to get a news router you have to get it through a hook that next is provide and for that in some cases you force to make something as a client component because you have to use a hook in your component and if you want to use a hook in your component you have to make that component as a client component but the philosophy just now we spoke about try to think every component as a server component as much as possible and whenever you need the interactivity bring the client component here you're going from one page to another page that interactivity can be managed with the link api of nextjs itself for that you don't have to make your component a client component server component is fine other than that there is really no other interactivity then why do you have to make this one as a client component forcefully now what you can do you can have a better understanding of multiple root layouts and with multiple root layouts you can solve this problem pretty well even documentation talk about that i have made a video on it please go ahead and check it out that how to handle multiple root layouts so that you can use any layout in any pages in every corner of your application seamlessly so don't forcefully bring client components wherever you don't need do you use models in your application so when you use models what happened a pop-up or a dialogue just comes up right on click on something but does it change the url it doesn't change the url is it but if you see nowadays what is happening your customers are looking for shareable models it means if you click on a model and for that particular model there will be a specific route and if someone is copying that route and sharing with someone or bookmarking you can actually get to the state which is almost equal to the view that you are seeing inside the model you want to see as an example let me show you on the screen we are seeing an app called photofit this app is not complete i'm just building it for the next video i want to teach where i want to talk about the route intercepting so what is happening in this case is like each of these images a thumbnail and if i click on any of this image it is going to pull a model with few more information is like who has taken this picture in a model but the part that what i am interested to show you is the moment i click on any of this picture please take a look into the urls like what exactly happening you will see the url is changing but usually in case of model you never see the url is changing but this is having an added benefit okay but first see this i'm going to click on this guy with two legs do you see that so there is a model that's coming up it still some styling work is pending for me but you see this url it got changed okay let's do it again now i am on localhost 3000 i'm clicking it again do you see the url changes to slash photo slash 103 so it means that you are actually having a route for this particular modal state now what if you just copy this one and share it with someone what exactly do you expect it will be going to a route which is going to 
show similar kind of information may not be as a model but as an independent page so your user or your end user is never ever going to miss out of what exactly you wanted to show as a model so it is the way that you are actually creating a shareable model something like this so i'm trying out this particular url in another tab i see the same image right so it means as a route this particular image and the information is available and also as a model on the same route when you are in the active state of the application you have the same model available now think about doing this in react.js it's really hard but you may be able to achieve it but to achieve it you have to write a lot of code in next.js you can do it with simply on few lines of code and at the same time the customers are asking for an user experience like this which you can actually provide so you have to know that there are certain ways of handling model you got to do that you got to adhere to that if you're interested just hook on to it i'm going to release this video in a few days so that you can learn like how to do how to achieve this kind of stuff and oh yeah don't forget to subscribe so that you don't lose out on the notifications once the new video comes oh let's talk about caching right so in next case like every request is by default cached so it means that if you are getting a response for the similar kind of url you will be getting the similar kind of response always now the point is how are you going to revalidate that cache or the invalidate that cache was the right way to get the fresh data think about a case that you have a list of to-do items and then you create a new to-do and you want to refresh your list of to-dos immediately now your to-dos are being fetched from a fetch call from the server that call is cached so where are you going to make this refresh happen are you going to make this refresh happen on your client side with some kind of router dot refresh or are you going to revalidate the cache some somewhere so that your cache get revalidated and you get the latest data what should be your objective these are the thought process guys that you need to bring in these are the thought process is going to make you much much better nexus developer and much much better person to understand nexus as a framework so this is another place where i have seen folks not thinking in next.js way and that's what i wanted to call out that you need to think in next.js way there are few other places for sure for example image handling fonts handling for seo metadata handling for accessibility area all these cases externalization the localization piece of it uh, authentication so in all these places you have to look into next.js like a framework so my call out is very simple use the framework like a framework not like anything else all that we discussed so far you can consider that as the tip of the iceberg there are more to it we have discussed things at a very high level and i spoke about a few points just to make you realize that when you are with a framework you have to really spend some time understanding what that framework gives you you have to be in the thought process with the framework you have to think in terms of that framework to code well see react.js is very popular there are a lot of developers around and of course there are a lot of folks probably moving towards next years but not everyone unfortunately is thinking in a way that how they should be thinking with next years idea for this video is to trigger some thought in you so that you can start thinking from those those perspective that we discussed in this video so if it was useful to you i would request you to please comment how it was useful to you or anything that you want to bring in for discussion you can definitely like this video and don't forget to subscribe because once you do that it feels really amazing thank you guys for all the support we'll be back again with another next day's video very soon take care of yourself